Hello, this is Shiley from Sheepishly Made and MCS Livestock. Thanks for joining the Blue Jay tutorial for Bird of the Month 2022. This is February's bird. So first we'll be going over supplies you need. Um, I use a large bath towel underneath everything. And then you use two sheets of bubble wrap. Then I have a hand towel to use and my fabric mesh that goes over your wool when you're felting. You will also need a roller. You can use a foam roller or another type of roller that you have. I recommend under four inches. Um, then you want some hot soapy water. Not a lot of soap, just a little bit to get it just a tiny bit sudsy. Um, I use a water bottle with some holes poked in the lid. The soap I use is a goat milk soap and it doesn't produce very many suds. You want to use an unscented soap. And I have a cloth to help me soak up some extra water and soap if need be. I also have some different colors of wool. I have the white for the background, some different shades of blue, and then brown and black. So starting this project, the, these wet felting paintings um, they are in several layers so we're going to start with the first layer i like to start with my fibers going up and down for the first layer we're just going to lay out um, white just use very little bit thin pieces that you pull out from your roving so there's layer one now we're going to move on to layer two and just repeat the whole process but the fibers going left to right this time Now on layer three, we're going to start to lay out parts of the blue jay. So we start with the tail, which you use the medium blue for the tail. And then you'll use the dark blue for the next part up and then the medium blue on top of that. And the body's kind of a pointed oval shape. And then we add the head on top. So the colors for the head use medium blue, light blue, and black. It has a black collar that goes around its neck and its head. And then it has um, the face kind of has some white or a light bluish color to it. Their bellies are also white, uh, but you won't see it in this angle for the picture. Now, if you're new to wet felting, I would recommend not doing all the small detail pieces like the beak. You can add that during the needle felting process. But after you lay out the first layer of blue, you're going to lay out all the white again going up and down. And then after you got that done, lay another layer of white going left or right. And then we can add the last layer of the blue for the blue jay. So like I said, if you're new to wet felting, the details are sometimes hard to wet felt and they like to move around a little bit. So if you want to leave out the beak and some of these other parts, you can and do it later. So for the tail, I'm adding these black stripes to it. Um, these are part of the tail feathers. So I'm just going to use real small amounts of black and just add them here on the tail. And we're also going to add some white to where the feathers will be. The white tips are the end of the feathers. So I just ball up a little bit of white between my fingers and then lay them out in a row. Um, there's a couple top rows and then a bottom row as well. And then I'm going to add black for the eye and lay out the brown for where my branches will be. Because our blue jay is sitting in a tree. So you can just lay out um, brown kind of looking like a tree. Use your imagination. You can lay it out however you want or you can follow along with me. So now we're going to start the wet felting process. So you want to lay your fabric mesh over top of your wool. And then you can start by adding your water, how, whatever method you use to add the water. You just want to add a little bit at a time. And then start pressing down and distributing the water evenly across the whole project. You want to make sure the wool is completely soaked, but you're not having a puddle of water sitting where your wool is. So keep adding water until it's completely soaked through. And then we'll start the felting process. So to felt, you're just going to gently move your hands across the piece at first. 
make sure it's distributed evenly. Um, I like to use a soap bar because then I can add a little bit of soap. I use a little bit more soap than most people when wet felting. Um, but I like the feeling of the suds and how easily I can move across the piece. Um, every once in a while, you're going to want to pull up your mesh and check to make sure that everything's still in the right place. Sometimes you can adjust the wool just a little bit um, so it's still in the right places. And you want to make sure your mesh isn't sticking to the wool. Now to continue our wet felting process, you're just going to rub over the entire piece. Now this video is sped up, so you're going to want to go slower than this and gently increase the agitation over time. So felt it with your hands until the piece is sticking completely together. And so when you lift up the mesh, um, it is not coming up and it's staying as one piece. So we can start the felting process with rolling. So you want to take your bubble wrap and your wool and the mesh and roll it up with your roller. I'm using a four inch foam roller. It's about 12 inches long. It's really great for these small projects. And then you're going to roll the entire project up in a towel. I just use a hand towel because it's small enough. And you're going to roll it back and forth. You want to do this in sets of 25. Then do a quarter turn and do another 25. So you want to cover the entire piece. So you'll roll a hundred times in total. So you have four different sections that you roll on. And after you turned it three different times and rolled each at 25 rolls, then you can unroll the entire piece and then you will rotate it the opposite direction and then roll it back up again and repeat the entire process. So you want to roll a hundred times, split them up into four different sections. So you start at one spot on the roll, do 25, turn 25, turn 25, turn 25 until you get a hundred. Then you unroll it again. Now we're going to flip it over. So it's face down and then you'll repeat the rolling process again. And once you roll it for the third time, you're going to rotate the piece again, still face down and do it a fourth time. So you've rolled it a total of 400 times. So we're going to pull it out and then we're going to do a pinch test on it. So you want to pinch it and lift up. And if it feels like one piece, then you have felted it. If the fibers are still coming apart, then you'll want to repeat the rolling process until it feels like one piece. So after the rolling, we're going to felt it a little bit more with our hands. I like to do this just to make sure it's all set. So I'm adding a little bit more soap. You don't have to, um, but we're going to felt it again with our hands across the whole piece. And after it's fully felted, we'll start the final process. So I'm going to flip it over and felt it on the back side. And then we're going to start folding. So folding is a process of shrinking the fiber. So my favorite way is to roll it up in my small roller and roll it on itself. It's kind of like the felting process, um, but you're rolling it up by itself instead of with the bubble wrap. So you can do it, um, you know, rotate it, flip it over, just like we did with the rolling but this time just um, on the roller itself. If you have a small roller, it works really great for this. And then we'll start rolling it up on itself. So you wanna roll it really tightly and then roll it in between your hands. So roll it up really, really tight, roll it in between your hands. Now this can take a while and you might have to roll it up and roll it like on the top and then unroll it and roll it back up and then like roll it in the middle um, because it likes to come apart and get loose while you're rolling. But as you're folding this, it will start to shrink and shrink down. And you can fold it um, on certain parts too. Like if one part of your piece is sticking out more than the other, you can roll that part up. But that is all the process for wet felting. Now you want to rinse out your piece completely and then set it out to dry 
100% before we start the felting process. So now we'll go into part two, needle felting. So here we are, we're um, going to start needle felting. I have my mat underneath. And then I have a couple felt needles, a 36 triangle and a 40 spiral, and then several colors of wool we'll be using. So I'm gonna start around the head here and kind of move some of the colors around. When you wet felt, um, the, the wool can move slightly, um, but the black collar, it's gonna come up a little higher on the head And it goes to the back of the head. And the medium blue comes up a little bit more into the black. And I'm gonna add some detail here. So the medium blue on the top of the head, it kind of has some feathers going off the back. So I'm gonna add some feathers, do some of that medium blue, and then add some of the dark blue in between to give it some depth. And I'm gonna clean up the black. The black got a little bit away from me while wet felting. So I'm gonna add some white in between to kind of give it the same effect as the medium blue where the feathers are coming off the back of the head. And now I'm gonna work around the beak. So the beak needs to be really long. So I'm gonna add some white maybe to uh, make it a little bit skinnier and then add some black to extend the beak out. And the light blue kind of comes um, around the base of the beak here. And the black will also go to the eye and then to the back behind the eye as well here in a minute. But you want to make that beak really long. The top comes down and curves down just slightly at the end. And then you can put a little white in the middle. So you can see the um, top and bottom of the beak. So the eye, I'm just defining it more by making it a nice circle. And getting the black from the beak to the eye. And then adding some black to the back um, where the black collar is as well. Now to highlight the eye, you want to take a little bit of white and just trace the outside edges of the eye with white. So I take a very little bit of white and just add it around the very edge of the eye here. And then I'm going to add the white inside the eye. So this is a reflection and it gives a very lifelike feature to the animal. The animal doesn't really have white in the eye but it's the reflection in the eye that gives it very detailed and lifelike appearance. Now moving on to the feathers, I'm going to felt down all the white and make sure they are nice and solid and felted down. And then we're going to add black on top of the whites. So this is the tip of the feathers. They have a upper row of feathers and then a bottom row of feathers. So we're going to um, define both. So you just want to add black on top. For right now and then define um, each feather so we're going to add the black in between and up of each of those white spots and then as well on the bottom feathers If you need to add a little bit more white, go right ahead. Sometimes you need to add a little bit more as you're adding the black on top of it to make the white tips pop. And then I just add a, a little bit of black um, on the bottom feathers there. And they kind of come down to a V right on the top of the, right where the tail starts. These are where the wings kind of meet together. Now we're going to work on the tail. So the tail feathers are very distinct as well. So I'm adding black to um, distinguish each tail feather. We're going to have 
five feathers here on the tail. And you want to add um, black to the bottom of each tail feather. And the black stripes need to be more defined as well. They're going to pop out from the rest of this. So to finish off the tail feathers, they have a fade from light blue to dark blue on each tail feather. So I'm going to add that light blue um, in between the black on the top and then add dark blue on the bottom. Since we already used medium blue for the tail, um, you don't really have to add any wool um, in the middle of those tail feathers. So you want to add dark blue on the bottom, light blue on the top, and then repeat for each feather and define the black stripes as you go along as well. So after we got the tail done, we're going to work on the top row um, of the wing feathers. So to, to finish those off, we're going to add light blue above each of the tips there. The tips are the white. So we're going to add the light blue first. And then the medium blue actually comes down over top of those. So that's like the shoulders of the bird. And then the wings lie underneath the shoulders. And they have little black stripes as well. Now for the bottom part of the wings, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add some light blue, um, kind of fade it down. And they do have some just lighter blue feathers. It kind of varies and depending, you know, on the lighting as well. When you're looking at pictures, it can change the color slightly. But I'm just going to add some lighter blue here and there on these feathers. And make them pop a little bit more. And then you're going to want to add the black stripes here eventually to all of the feathers. Now that we have all the feathers done, we're going to make the one leg on the bird. So we're going to have the leg come down from the bottom of the bird. We're going to do the left leg. The right leg is blocked by the bird here. So you're going to have the leg come down and then have the so-called toes. You're going to have one come out to the front and one behind it. The other toes would be in front of the bird there where we can't see them. So you just want to make a nice thick leg coming down and then the toes. And then finally, we're just going to add a little bit of shading here on our bird. So I'm going to take a little bit of the darker blue and just add real thin pieces to give it a little bit more depth here on the shoulders. And that concludes our felting. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, um, please comment below. You can send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. You can find um, the Bird of the Month subscription on my Etsy shop. We have a lot more nice birds to come. And the tutorials will be posted every month here on YouTube. So thanks for watching. I'm just going to sign my work here and then we'll be off. Happy felting!